And we've got great representation from our caucus team as well, uh, Minister Ng, Minister Hussein, who got us started on this important work on housing, uh, Chad Collins, our National ha Caucus Housing Chair, who's been pushing for smart solutions, uh, and many of his recommendations are part of the plan we're announcing today, along with great members, Leah, Majid, Paul, Manny, Tony, uh, and uh, all parts of our great teams here. But I really want to kick it off uh, by thanking the workers behind me, uh, thanking uh, the folks who are stepping up uh, to be part of solving the housing crisis for all that governments can and should be stepping up. The work you're doing, and especially the work you're going to be doing over the coming years, is going to be unbelievably important as you build not just homes uh, for Canadians, uh, but homes that you're going to be able to see yourselves living in as well. That's an important part of this, that it's not just about building, uh, building homes and uh, great buildings and apartments to rent. It's about making sure uh, that nurses, construction workers, teachers who work in a given city can also live in that given city. And that's, uh, that's something we're all gathered here today. I'm really excited about this announcement today because Canadians need homes they can afford. This is one of the most urgent issues that people are facing. Think about the couple who just had their first kid and don't know if they can afford to upgrade from their one-bedroom condo. Or the student who can pay tuition but can't afford the rent near campus or someone who can simply no longer afford housing in their community at all. It used to be that the deal was, if you worked hard at a good job, you could afford a home. That doesn't seem the case anymore. Younger generations are worried that they won't have a life that looks like how they grew up, like what their parents and grandparents had. Well, that's not fair. So we've been stepping up putting in the work, talking to Canadians, talking to housing experts, talking to builders, so that we could bring the right solutions that meet the moment. So today, we are releasing the most comprehensive and ambitious housing plan ever seen in Canada. It It builds on the sizable investments we've made over the years, and it goes a lot further. It's a plan to build housing, including for renters, on a scale not seen in generations. We're talking about almost 3.9 million homes by 2031. Whoa. It's a plan that, at its heart, is a commitment to affordability. Our goal is that no Canadian pays more than 30% of their income towards their home. It's also a plan to make sure that we don't leave the most vulnerable behind, that we keep building housing for people with low incomes, and that we take action to address homelessness so people never have to resort to living in a tent. And it's a Team Canada approach that provides incentives for provinces, territories, builders, and nonprofits to come on board. The math is simple. If we can increase housing supply, we can bring down prices. And we're going to need the know-how, abilities, and determination of workers like the ones here behind me today. I want to give another shout-out to the members of the Carpenters' Union. And Jason, thank you for your leadership specifically. A lot of union workers are going to be part getting this done. You're going to be very, very busy. The construction industry will need reinforcements to get all this work done. So as part of our plan, we're going to be increasing support for workers in the skilled trades, creating apprenticeship opportunities for the next generation of workers, creating opportunities for young people, and investments to cut red tape for those with foreign credentials. We've made a promise to Canadians that we were going to solve the housing crisis. So we rolled up our sleeves and we got to work. No ideas were off the table. No stone was left unturned. I'll let Minister Fraser talk through the details, but this is a comprehensive and detailed plan. Sean, you and your team have been incredibly thorough in how you've brought this together. This isn't simple slogans. It's not some YouTube video filled with half-baked ideas and inaccuracies. This is a serious plan, built after consultation with Canadians, with experts, with builders. It's a plan that's actually going to make a difference in the lives of Canadians. But it will also require provinces and territories to step up 
and meet the level of ambition that Canadians expect them to. No one order of government can do this on their own. We all have our own levers and our own responsibilities, and Canadians need each and every one of us to step up. It's not right that housing prices have made cities and a lot of other places out of reach for young people, including millennials and Gen Z. Young people deserve the same freedoms, choices, and opportunities that their parents and grandparents had. We need to make sure we're building a future that is fair for every generation. Today's housing plan is about the next steps we're taking to do just that. <laughs> Perhaps not. Uh, look, thanks very much, everyone. Democracy in action. Um, uh, look, I want to start just by saying thank you to everyone for being here, in particular uh, to the workers and apprentices who were uh, studying to uh, get the skills that are going to help build our way out of the housing crisis. Uh, to my colleagues, in particular, uh, Minister Hussein, who uh, uh, preceded us and set, up, uh, set us up for a lot of the success we're going to, to enjoy. And uh, he absolutely deserves a uh, round of applause. Uh, Chad, some of our municipal leaders, uh, Leah, Paul, oh, geez, everybody's here. My God, Majid, Manny, Tony, everybody's, this is terrific. And uh, I, I really want to say thank you because we can't uh, get very far on our own. Uh, we are going to uh, solve uh, the national housing crisis. Uh, and, and this is our plan uh, that's going to help us do it. Uh, I know we're going to solve the housing crisis because I know what Canadians are capable of. Before I walk you through some of the measures, uh, I just want to tell you about some of the people uh, and organizations who are actually inspiring uh, what we're doing today. Uh, this plan is inspired by people like John Wesley Chisholm, who's building a housing development in a small community called Musket Abbott Harbor, working with volunteers like Brian and John and Karen, builders like Mike, who are actually going to meet the housing needs of an entire community. It's inspired by companies like Dora Construction, who's building a home building factory, creating good jobs, good middle class jobs for Canadians. At the same time, they're introducing a community to apartment buildings that are manufactured locally in one of those factories. In fact, someone from the company called me 10 minutes before our announcement today to talk about another opportunity to add 10,000 homes to the national supply by incentivizing more factory built homes. It's inspired by projects like Cody's Place, a project that's providing housing to low-income families and is actually supporting local home builders when they place their orders to build out more units. It's inspired by ideas that are allowing us to build small homes at prices that people can afford across income levels generated by companies like Sprout and Jones Company uh, to make sure that people can actually participate in being part of the solution by building homes next to properties that they already own for people that they love. These are extraordinary opportunities that we've learned about. And you know what all these have in common? All of these come from my own neck of the woods in Nova Scotia. But what's extraordinarily inspiring is that there's solutions like this, people like this, ideas like this in every part of the country. Workers with the Carpenters Union, people are starting to become apprentices right here that are going to help us build our way out of the housing crisis. Now the plan that we're producing today includes three main components. The first is to build more homes. We're going to do that by reducing the cost of home building, by putting tax incentives on the table for builders, low-cost financing so we can scale up building, not just for large institutional builders, but for individual homeowners who want to put an additional unit in their backyard where they can accommodate that. We're also going to be launching new measures that help unlock federal lands in a way that we have never pursued before, at a faster speed and in larger numbers, including with a new strategy that will allow us to maintain ownership of the land and enter into long-term leases so we can reduce the cost not just of construction, but the cost of living for the people who were living in the homes built on those lands. In addition to reducing the cost, we also have to make it easier to build homes by incentivizing leaders like the municipal leaders that we have here today who've worked with us through the Housing Accelerator Fund to upzone their communities, reduce permitting time so we can build faster and more easily. We're also going to be putting more infrastructure money on the table to help ensure that communities are prepared for the homes that we need to build. In addition, we're going to make sure that we change the way that homes are built by making major investments to train and scale up the Canadian home building workforce to more quickly and more easily recognize the credentials of those who were trained in another country and to ensure that we're incentivizing home manufacturing in factory settings so we can increase home building at a scale we've never seen before. We've got new measures to make it easier to rent or buy, including a renter's bill of rights, including a renter's protection fund, including using your rental history to establish a credit, new supports to help people save up for a down payment and to reduce the monthly cost of a mortgage. 
And we can't forget that we have a responsibility to help some of the most vulnerable in this country. We're putting additional investments on the table to build out affordable housing because the cause of homelessness is not a person's family history. It's not just mental health or addictions. It's a lack of adequate affordable housing. We're also putting more money on the table to help nonprofits acquire properties that are available to low-income families today to keep them affordable forever and putting additional supports directly for communities who are working to end encampments by transitioning people to durable housing solutions. Folks, we're going to lead, but we can't do it on our own. We need provinces and territories to match our ambition. We need municipal leaders to adopt faster permitting process and more permissible zoning processes so we can actually build more homes and communities that already have the infrastructure to support them. To cities, it's time to legalize more kinds of housing. We need to work together across levels of government to incentivize home builders and support the organizations that are helping people who need a home themselves. We have a choice to make, not just as a federal government, but as a country. Do we want to talk about the housing crisis, or do we want to solve it? I want to tell you exactly where the federal government stands. It's time to build, and we're going to bring Canadians along with us. Thank you so much.